Looking to have your day brightened up? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Hashtag Positivity Podcast. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into the podcast. We're back here with episode two with John on the co-host desk. John, what's up, brother? Good to be back. Yeah. Awesome week last week. Yeah, had uh, a great time. I think the uh, first episode was a hit. Been been hearing a lot of good feedback from our friends. For sure. Um, I like having the video up. It's pretty cool. Yeah, having the videos, uh, I think, a great way for us to reach a whole bunch of uh, different people that might not know you or might not know me. And so to be able to get started on this and to be able to get other people exposed, um, from all over has has been awesome. I was you know I was telling you before we started and telling Donnie that uh, I've heard from people just uh, over the last week alone from Los Angeles, California, Australia, New Orleans, Louisiana. I know you had a conversation with yep. our, our buddy Marty from yep. New Orleans, uh, all over the country. Um, and so, uh, and, and the the good news is we're just getting rolling here, and our you know how we want to approach this isn't isn't going to change so hopefully the numbers will continue to build yep. every week yeah we're just uh, kind of cross-pollinating for, you know your fan base and the hashtag positivity followers yeah I think it's only gonna grow from there but yeah the the uh, the video came out awesome Don's crushing it with the uh, editing and putting that out on YouTube and Facebook so really appreciate that Don Okay, yeah, Don. Don, yeah, I appreciate you. Got the you big too. thumbs up over there, so that means we're doing something right. Something right. <laughs> Don, yeah, Donnie. Donnie does a does a great job for us. So before we get into the sort of the topics for the week, uh, when we were talking earlier this week about um, uh, airing for this podcast episode two, uh, you were talking about um, yourself and kind of where you may be falling off a little bit and. Yeah. So I think it's important to realize, you know, as we say all the time, that we do not at all have it all figured out, and we struggle with the same things everybody else does. So, uh, what's happening, man? Yeah. So I mean, one of the things that I've been, I say struggling, but I'm very aware of it. So I used to be very, very uh, committed to my fitness and my diet, and you know, working out regularly yeah. every day, if not twice a day. Um, very regimented with my diet, and. Um, you know that was that was a long uh, long relationship that I had with one of my very good friends and and he owned a gym and I was going there as CrossFit gym I was a coach there for a long time and a lot of my best friends were members of that gym and you know I'm still you know very very close friends with them I talk to them all the time and um, since the since the gym closed I find myself kind of on a downhill slide as far as that goes yeah so I've gone to a couple different gyms worked out at people's houses but it's you know it's kind of like walking into someone else, someone else's house I, I was very comfortable at a certain place for many years sure um, build relationships build relationships people. there and you know Tr there's trust yep people, especially in the, in the CrossFit community I'm not a CrossFit guy yep. um, but especially in the CrossFit community it's you know they build so much camaraderie and teamwork throughout their their training in their gyms. Yeah, um, that's like the thing about CrossFit. Absolutely, just the community. So, and that's why I think you have people from all different walks of life who have never been exposed to fitness that have sort of latched on to this the, the, the whole CrossFit deal. Um, so I know I know how hard it can be. It's it's tough to walk into a, a new gym. I'm super fortunate that I train with a bunch of people that I have for a long time. We have a, a unbelievably committed group in a small little dungeon gym we have and. Um, those are the best. Yeah, but I, you know, I'll tell you, man. If 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 it's something that you want to get back into and you feel like it's missing, you're welcome anytime. Um, and, and I hope for your sake that you you are able to get back doing it. If it's not at our place at a CrossFit gym or uh, in any other place, but I think the hardest part when you take time off is that first step back in, like anything else in life, right? Yep. Oh yeah, it's easy. It's so easy to make excuses, and and a lot of the time it's. Um, using time as an excuse. Of so, so well, I'm busy doing this, I'm busy doing that. But, you know, to take an hour or two hours, which is going to pay off dividends for myself, ment mental health, and just feeling good, and, you know, th the level of confidence that comes with being in shape and doing the things that yeah. you want to do, that's, I, I really want to get back into that. And, uh, we you always, know, yeah. a, a lot of it is, fit, you know, just stress stuff too, you know? Absolutely. You get away from working out regularly, but then you add a little bit of stress, and, uh, you know, whether it's from relationships or family issues or yeah. just work issues, anything like that. 
the, the eating kind of correlates with that. Sure so, does. you know, you're like comfort food and, and yeah. things like that, or you, you know, you're um, putting off a meal until the end of the yeah. day. I, f I find lately that uh, a lot of the times I'm eating once a day because I'm doing stuff all day long. I don't make the time to plan yeah. and, you know, pre-plan cook my meals. Yeah. So it's, um, it's easy to fall off. And then yeah. for people that have always been into working out, if, if you're, you know, any of the listeners out there, if you're, have worked out for a long time, it's a huge part of your life, or you're just getting into it and you really like it. You know, I am not a, a fitness trainer or an exercise physiologist, but uh, one of the things I know about anything that you commit to in your life is when it falls off, other things in your life will fall off as well, right? right. So if training for whatever reason or working out was such a passion for you and you loved it, and over the last however long it's sort of fallen off for you, other parts of your life will fall off. It, so you, and, and it's about, it's not about whether or not you can get it in. It's about when you get it in. It's yeah. it's building it into your day, right? Jay? Absolutely. So not like, well, time has been an issue because anybody who's listening to this or me right now, you know, we're we're good friends and we do this together. But I could easily call bullshit on oh, that yeah. and say, oh, absolutely, yeah. Everybody has twenty four hours in a day. Yep. Everybody. Oh yeah, I, and I know that you know because before it was the same time every day, and I scheduled everything around that. Around that was it. that was the most important part of my day. The foundation going to see by those which people, the foundation yeah. by which you do everything else. Yep, absolutely. And that was for for many years. For many years, I was very very strict on that. Like that's what I looked forward to. That was my stress relief. That was you know, my, my getaway for that hour, two hours right. during the day. So I, uh, but I bet you, if you, I bet you, if you look back on that and I bet you, if you look back on how productive your life was in every other area, there's a direct correlation between your health, your well being, your fitness and the passion you have for training yep. and how productive and effective you were in every other area of your life. Right. Oh, Guaranteed. absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And you know, I noticed that when it comes to my sleep. If we, but, I'm, know, just gonna, I, I'm just going to jump in for one second. Yeah. If we keep doing these, Donnie, and you keep telling me to stop moving my feet, I'm going to pick <laughs> up this. I am going to pick up this laptop and I'm going to throw it at you. Okay. I, I am not glued into the floor. I've got to move my feet. So I, just I, remember I can't help for, the, for the viewers when they see the camera shaking, it's because. Uh, John has this propensity to bounce his feet like he's a young child. <laughs> okay, so just to, all right, fine. So just a quick disclaimer for everybody that's watching or listening: if the camera's bouncing, it's not Donnie's fault. It is not Seven Roads Media's fault. It's my fault. I, okay, for me to be able to sit still and do anything for one hour straight is a miracle in and of itself. So my feet are going to move, my legs are going to move, my hands are going to move. There will be times where we do this thing where I stand up and shout. That's just what I do. It's who I am. So, Donnie, don't send me another text message, please, <laughs> about not moving my feet when we do these podcasts. I can't look at another one. Jason, what were you saying? Yeah, you know, what were you saying? I don't even remember, but maybe we can mount the camera on the, on the uh, wall next week, and that should help take care of it. Mount that. it on my foot, Donnie. Let's see how that goes for the next... <laughs> Ten years we do this podcast. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, but that's fine. Did. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, well, yeah, actually, you said I don't. Uh, I'm going to cut you off. So I think that does mean yeah. that you meant to cut me off. Yeah, actually, I did it intentionally because <laughs> because of Donnie. That's so right. I forgive both of you. But sure. uh, yeah, so I mean, I I noticed it even you know my sleep patterns and things like that. It it does, like you said, carries over to every aspect of life: productivity, sleep, how you feel, your confidence, all of that stuff. So yeah, that was something that. Um, you know, it's been on my mind and I see, you know, I see changes in myself that I'm like, man, I got to, and every, I think you've probably gone through it, Don, you've probably gone through it. Everybody that's listening has probably done it. We're like, all right, well, starting tomorrow, I'm going to do this. And starting tomorrow, I'm going to do this. No, you got to just start, you know, take care of yourself. That's yeah. the most important thing. So I'm going to, I'm going to commit to, uh, getting my health back on track and you know there's some other things in the works um, you know when that gym closed we, uh, myself and another good friend had the intentions of opening another CrossFit gym sure. so you know we're still working on that in the awesome. background so good. so I'm hoping that uh, the, the ball's still been rolling and uh, I, I think that we're gonna make some good progress on that but yeah afterwards maybe we can talk and uh, I'd love to get back in the gym yeah. and, and do something more regularly. Just, just start by doing something I mean you, you've done it before you're well versed in it so you know what's gonna make you feel good you know what's going to get you up and motivated to tackle the day so start by doing something yep. you know and you will never you know you're never going to be able to get back into it right away at the same level that you left oh, but absolutely. you'll get back there quickly and for everybody listening whether it's working out whether it's um 
whatever it is that you've lost in your life, if it's important enough to you and you realize the benefit it had in your life, then it is not an extra. It's not a if I can do it. It has to become what you do. It essentially, in part, defines who you are. Um, because we can come up with every excuse in the world not to do stuff. Oh yeah, that's Whether, the and the part. gym is the gym is just one example. You know, we were talking earlier about uh, the notion of time. Well, every single person that I know has the same 24 hours in every day. If you can commit 4% of your week, 4% of those seven days to working out, that's about one hour, four days a week. And so it's a s small, small price small, to pay small commitment. to change your life completely. Yeah. You know, I think it's, you know, well worth it for you. You know how much you loved it. You know how great it is. Um, so I, I hope for you that you get back after it. Otherwise, every single week when we come on here, I'm going to bust your ass about the fact that you haven't gotten back into the gym. All right. So it's a, it's a good goal, I think, for you and a good goal for those people that are listening and watching. If there's a goal out there, folks, and you want to go after it, go after it. Uh, this podcast for us is the exact same way. We have absolutely zero experience in doing podcasts. Jason has more than I do because he's done this on his own for a while. I've been guests on podcasts before, but we truly want to touch and inspire as many people as we can and have some fun along the way. So whatever it is in your life that you're thinking about doing, and, and you know, for Jay, it's the it's getting back to working out. But whatever it is, I challenge you to find some time this week to build it in so it becomes part of your life, not a if I get a chance type deal. And I, I think you'll be amazed at how much you'll be able to grow. So, you know, speaking of time, I think it's a good, probably a good segue into what we wanted to discuss unless there's any housekeeping items we wanna, we wanna get taken care of first on your end, my brother. No, I, I actually just saw a comment pop up from our friend Craig. So uh, Craig, we as we know, just had uh, New baby boy, so that's congratulations, that's, Craig. That's pretty exciting. Congrats awesome. to Craig and his family, yeah, um, and uh, and then also do we Elias. Have a name? Do we have a name for Craig's baby boy? Don, do you remember the baby's name? We'll get back to. I All think right. I know what it is, but I don't want to. You should guess. It'll be a lot more fun. Yeah, take a take a shot in the dark. Guess first, and then reach out. Craig, we do care about you. Ryder. 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 Yep. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. That is awesome. Well, congratulations, Craig, and welcome, Ryder, to. The world and we wish Craig you and your family nothing but blessings and uh, good health for your baby and that's awesome news good and stuff. uh and like I mentioned too, uh Elias Elias and his wife just had another baby uh, another so shout out a, baby it's 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 uh baby season baby pumpkin season. season and baby season baby season and, and I, yeah. I hope you like babies more than you like pumpkins I love babies <laughs> and I noticed that this week the yeah. pumpkin's gone yeah yeah the, this week the pumpkin is gone yep uh, I, I smashed the pumpkin <laughs> Um, no, we didn't, but, uh, it's been, it's been removed. So, uh, yeah, time. Congratulations guys. Yeah. That's, that's good news. So, you know, I, I, when we talk about time it, it, and the reason that I wanted to sort of bring this up and talk about this a little bit today is, um, and you know, you talking about working out is just one example, uh, but I am a, a huge believer in, um, not just using our time to the best of our ability, uh, but giving of our time freely to other people. And what we're trying to do, th not just through this medium, but uh, what we're trying to do um, when we're off air and the way that we lives our, live our lives every day. Time is one of those things where everybody has the same amount of it, right? Yep. And every single person has different talents, strengths, and gifts. The greatest gift that we can ever give another human being doesn't cost a cent, but we exchange part of our life for it, and that's time. Yep. And uh, I had a chance. Most uh, valuable thing we have. Absolutely. Yeah. Because we are as, as morbid as this sounds, and, and I don't mean it to, but the reality of the situation is every second that we're here, every minute that we're here, we're getting closer to the end, right? Yep. So um, how are we going to use... The pr literally the precious seconds, moments, hours, days, months, and years that we have. How are we going to use our strengths, talents, and gifts? M far more valuable than money, right? Everybody says, "Well, that you know that guy or that girl, they lived a beautiful life. They they died a, a wealthy man or a wealthy woman." Well, they can't take that with them either. Um, but 
when when you hear about people that have passed, young or old, and they're eulogized or talked about in a way where they gave of themselves, they freely gave of themselves to other people, using the strengths, the talents, the gifts they have, to me, that's the most unbelievable gift that you can give to anybody. Yep. And and how often do we go out of our way and pay sometimes ungodly amounts of money to save ourselves time? You know, you're you're paying for convenience and not only are you willing to share your time with someone else, you're willing to pay to save that time Absolutely. and then give it in a, in a different uh, different area. Absolutely. And I think it's a double-edged sword too, right? To, to your point, we live in a world, especially in the Northeast, you know, other parts of the country, I think is a little bit slower pace. People still appreciate um, the little things in life that uh, a lot of us take for granted. But if you look all around the world, it's you, you were just talking about spending money to save time, and we drive through is a great example. Yep. Um, Drives through things like Uber, things you know. Absolutely. Cutting even if it's a minute or two minutes, you're willing to pay X amount of dollars to save that time somewhere throughout your day. And then my question is, with that time that you've saved, what are you doing with it? What are you doing with that time, right? Right. So Hopefully the return is as good as you know, the, investment. the investment. Absolutely. And so I, I think we lose sight of, and not just the people listening, myself included, maybe you, maybe Donnie, but we lose sight of the fact that the greatest gift we all have as people costs nothing to give away. And if we're lucky enough and fortunate enough to receive it from others, they have exchanged part of their life to spend that time with us. And so for me, it's not lost on me. I don't minimize that at all. Right. Um, and, and so I, I just think for people that are listening to the podcast, uh, wherever you are, I want you to really think, try to think about, man, what do I bring to the table that I could use to gift to somebody else? What What can I do with an extra... 20 minutes with an extra hour or with an extra two hours every week that I can give freely to somebody else that might be able to change their life. You know, there's a, there's an old quote. I'm not sure exactly where it came from, but I share this a lot when I, when I go out and speak. Um, if you tell somebody you care, you may change them for a minute, for an hour. But if you show somebody that you care, you could change their life forever. And in my experience, the greatest influences that I've ever had on my life were not people that told me things. They were people that took the time to do things with me. And I would think that your experience is probably similar. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's that age-old saying that actions speak louder than words. And that's, you know, exactly what you just said. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's so rewarding and you feel so thankful when someone gives you a piece of their time, especially if you know what else that they have, you know, they have going on in their lives, whether it be uh, some stressor or uh, just a limited amount of time that they have that, you know, that um, I spend time with people who are very busy. Otherwise, you guys included yeah. and I'm um, very thankful for the time that you guys uh, give back to me to do this podcast and vice versa. helping out with the videos and, and things like that. Absolutely. So. And I think there's a huge difference. You know, you mentioned the word people are so busy. I think there's a huge difference between being busy and being productive. People all the time talk about how busy they are. But then you look all around you, you look at all the people accomplishing, accomplishing unbelievable things around you and you say, how do they have time to do that with the same 24 hours a day that I have? Yep. How are these people able to do unimaginable things? They, they've got the same time that I have. Yeah, where's the pause button? <laughs> right. And I, I think it's because they're not busy. They're productive. Right. They maximize their moments. Yep. And I know for me, it's a, it's a huge challenge. Because for a lot of years, I, I would, in my own head and in my own life, I would think, man, I'm so busy. And then you look back and you self-reflect at the end of the day, the week, the month, or the year, and I go, jeez, I, I don't really know what I accomplished. What did I do? What did yeah. I do, yeah. right? So, what do I have to show for it? So I think there's a huge difference between being busy and being productive. So, you know, how productive are you? How productive are you? Because there's a lot of people out there doing amazing, amazing things. And as far as I know, they only have the same 24 hours in a day. And I think it, it speaks a lot to who you choose to surround yourself with, too. Right. When you have a team of people that 
all are driven towards the same goal. Yeah. You push one another. And you, that's, you, that's super not only do you push one another, which is hugely important, but you're able to lean on one another and, hey, you're really good at things that I suck at. So could you pick up the slack on that end? And maybe I could help you with some things that you may struggle with. Then that thing that might take you two hours might take me 10 minutes. Yep. And the, the media stuff that might take me forever right. will take you five minutes. Yeah. So you, you help each other. Um, so I, I just think there's a huge difference between being busy and being productive. Uh, and I'm, I'm learning more about that every day. Uh, but it, it's such a, t- such a precious gift that we all have. Every single person on this planet can give of themselves freely to somebody else. And it's the most precious gift we can give because you exchange, exchange part of your life for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's a crazy thing. Time, you, you know, you think about just how limited it is and you know, the people that know that they have a limited amount left and that they still go out of their way to give of themselves and, and commit time to different causes that they feel very strongly about. It's unbelievable. Um, we take it for granted. You know, sure the, 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 that movie, the old movie with Morgan Freeman and, and, uh, um, Jack Nicholson, The Bucket List. The Bucket List, yeah. Right? It was yeah. an awesome movie, yeah. but a great portrayal of, well, one person lived their life a certain way, the other person lived their life very differently, but joined together at the at the end of their journey with maybe weeks or months left. And how are you going to live your life? You know, what, and what are you going to do that uh, is of value, not just uh, to you with the time you have left, but to those you love and those you care about yep. because if the world has, has taught us anything um, recently but history if history's taught us anything it's that the next minute the next hour tomorrow isn't guaranteed so uh, my, my biggest goal and hope for the people that we're able to touch and, and work with is that they, they get up every day and have a sense of purpose and want to kick life's ass every day because you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring right right on yeah it's uh it's some deep stuff. Yeah. It really, yeah, you know, it, it really gets your it gets your wheels turning. But, and, and, because, uh, and but we never think about it, right? You know what I mean? Yep. We never think about it. So that's one thing that you know, hopefully, will resonate with some people and give them some food for thought in terms of how they want to how they want to push forward. Um, and then I know you said another thing that that uh, you wanted to to touch on was um, kids, the role that uh, we may have in. Um, helping touch kids' lives and influence kids' lives and, and anything around kids that you kind of wanted to touch on in, in general. Yeah, well, you know, just uh, thinking about those, you know, uh, Craig and Elias bringing, bringing new life into the world, yeah, right? Man. So I'm not a parent myself. Um, I know that you and Don and, and a lot of our other friends are. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I had a conversation with another uh, couple friends of mine about a week ago, and uh, one of them is expecting a baby. And he's like, man, do you think I'm ready for this? And my other friend Matt was like, you're never ready for it. You no. know, you might have you might have the nursery ready. You might have the this the equipment that you need. You might have the uh, the stuff, but you're never you're never ready for it. Even you if you not. have a second or a third. And uh, Don and I talked about this a little bit before before you got here. And um, yeah, it's it's unbelievable just that that concept of kind of talking about time you're giving so much of your time now to someone else absolutely and uh trying to trying to raise them the right way and i know you guys do a lot of work in the schools and uh it's something that i've been working at you know a little bit more recently going into the different schools and sharing this message of positivity and empathy and anti-bullying but it's just crazy to me how um just that that concept of bringing life into the world and having such a huge responsibility, not only with your time, but you're molding someone's future. Yeah. And you think you have everything figured out. Like I'll tell you what, and I I, I share this with people all the time, but you're a a thousand percent, right? That, um, there is no one blueprint for it. When that baby goes home with you from the hospital, there isn't one. And, um, I, I, I still remember after, you know, 48 hours of having a brand new baby boy, 48 hours later, that baby boy was in a car seat and we were taking him home. And I remember for the first time in my adult life feeling like the most inept, incompetent person on the planet. It's gotta be terrorizing. And I had no idea what to do. And so we, we, I leave the hospital with this 
little boy who's now my sole responsibility, my wife's responsibility, our whole life has changed in an instant, and your whole world gets flipped upside down. And I, I'll be totally honest, I hated being the parent of a newborn. I used to get so pissed off when you know you you talk to other parents of newborns and they'd be like, "This is the greatest gift ever! <laughs> oh my God, this is the most. Uh, we are so blessed every day. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened in my life." And I'm thinking in the back of my mind, "Are you talking about that little thing <laughs> that?" literally can't move can't speak nothing but requires every second of your time yeah because i didn't have that feeling at all i thought it sucked yeah here take mine for a little while i, I thought it <laughs> sucked and it didn't mean i didn't love my son or right. my daughter I, I, of course i loved him but if i i mean if we're keeping it real it was brutal yeah. it was absolutely brutal and it gets busier but better busier as they get older and then they're introduced to all the things that we're going to end up talking about here on the show and you get scared as a parent so when they're first born you want to make sure every night that they're breathing and you check on them every night to watch their stomach rise and fall and then you're worried about their as are they going to walk on time are they going to are they going to talk on time are they do they hear okay and you know the reality is for a lot of parents that isn't how it goes there are setbacks there are obstacles there are challenges along the way yep. um, you don't have that support system that you know that a lot of people have and yeah, uh, fi stresses financially, and people. Some people don't have homes. That's right. They're, they're homeless, and they're bringing kids and, into the world, and they have to worry about that. And just it, life, right? Yeah. Real life stuff. Yep. That all the baby classes in the world, all the books you read in the world, all the preparation that you read in the world, still does not prepare you when you take that baby home. And and okay, now it's my responsibility as a father and a man to try to raise them in a way that. Okay, hopefully they're going to represent our name well, but really all you end up caring about is are they happy and are they healthy? And then you realize, you know what, everything else we can help them with. Are they happy and are they are they healthy? And in, in the work that Donnie and I do in the schools and the work that I do with kids all over the country, man, they're exposed to so much more than we were. The... the, the challenges, the obstacles, the pressures that these kids face from a technologically advanced world is crazy yep. and it consumes their world so sure, yeah yeah i mean they, tough. They, they have everything going on in the whole world in their pocket they can you know flip that phone screen on and see what's going yeah. on everywhere you know you're not able to uh not that you would necessarily keep things from them but you're not you're not able to control what they're exposed to like you used to be able to that's right and uh they know it, and they know that they have that exposure at their fingertips. But it's it's created to in in some degree uh, a lot of kids at a very young age that are never taught how to communicate. You know, they don't know how to have conversations, not just with adults, but with their peers, because all of or many of their relationships are fabricated through technology and through social media. Yeah. So it's scary. Yeah, it's uh, you know, I, I remember a little while back your. Uh, one of your posts on Instagram was your kids talking about what it means to be kind. And that's, you know, stuff like that yeah. shows you, you, you guys are doing a good job. So we're doing I mean, the best that we can, yeah. you know what I mean? But, uh, I, some days I feel like we do a really good job and some days I feel like, uh, I, I've failed as a, a parent and we do the best we can. You know, Donnie's kids are older than mine. He's been a, a dad a lot longer than I have and he's a great dad and, but we don't get it right every day. Yep. You know, we just don't get it right every day. And there's got to be times where you're, you know, learning from what you guys do at the schools and you take that home and vice versa, what you're doing at home, what you see that works, how you can apply that to the kids and, and just make, make yeah. those relationships more meaningful and productive. How to make it more meaningful. And also, you be I, for me, I become almost hyper vigilant because some of the stuff I've seen. Yep. So I really have to work to find that balance, right? Like, okay, am I being too hard on my kids right now because of what I dealt with with kids today yeah. because those kids aren't necessarily my kids but the their pressures may end up being the same so it works it works both ways yeah. you know they're, they're our most precious gift you know we in, in this world that we live in which is a money driven world um our most precious gift are these kids they're our most important product that's why i've chosen to do the work i've done 
my entire adult life, I believe so strongly in not just the potential that these, that these kids have, but we need to put them in positions where they're around people that are going to support them and try to help them get down a path that is uh, a good one for them. And when they fall and fail, and they will, and we want them to, because that's how you grow. Part of life. Yeah, I'm not a big believer in, and if anybody's listening, please don't misunderstand me. I think the whole self-esteem movement that was created in this country 15 or 20 years ago is a load of garbage. I think real self-esteem comes from falling on your face yeah. and learning to pick yourself back up. Participation trophies yeah, really don't give anyone out any, uh, any good. Yeah, all garbage. But I do think that the more we can put kids around positive influences, male and female positive influences, uh, the better off they're going to be. Yeah. And kids learn from one another too. I mean, that's, you know, that's another huge part of it is the, the peer support that they have. So you surround yourself with a good group of friends. One of your friends is going out and doing work with charity. And maybe you think, you know, you want to try that out and maybe it's not for everyone, but you know, kids learn the same way we do. They, they surround themselves with a certain group of people and a lot of those people will rub off on them same way that it does for adults. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's, that's the hope, you know? So, so, uh, a story that I came across and uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier, um, speaking of children and, and doing good things, there's a, uh, there's a kid, they're calling him, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know really what they're, what they're calling him. He's got a cape and it's got donuts on it. And, uh, we're trying not to trigger Donnie too much, but, uh, <laughs> Yeah. So this kid, a little over a year ago, this this uh, he's gonna be ten years old. Um, spotted four police officers in a store. He lives in Florida, and he wanted to do something nice for them because he knows, you know, seeing the news these days, what police officers are going through. So he bought he bought them some donuts, just as like a, a thank you. And uh, since then, he's been on a mission. He says that he wants to uh, thank every police officer in the country by by giving them coffee and donuts so he's been on this mission so far they've uh, distributed more than 28,000 donuts to stations across the country which is unbelievable so awesome you, you know you think about it that and, so and awesome. it's just, just this this kid who is just trying to do the right thing and uh, for his birthday they're going to uh, they're gonna try and visit 10 states in 10 days and just continue with this mission of theirs but um, how yeah, cool is that I, I mean just just awesome you know the things that kids uh, that kids do, and we've seen a number of of things come up in social media and the news where children are starting lemonade stands to to benefit victims of the hurricanes and all the different places and the natural disasters, the fires out in California and things like that. And then uh, it's even unbelievable. Local stories you, you uh, you've heard of uh, cards for a cause that yeah. the kid, the yeah. uh, local boy uh, Brady, who was selling his baseball card collection to support his friend who had cancer, unbelievable. unfortunately has since passed. But he continues on with his mission because right. you know it means a lot to him. And isn't it crazy though? Like we we look at these stories, and we are supposed we when I say we the adults, we are supposed to be our kids' first teachers. Whether you're an educator, a police officer, a fireman, wh whoever. We are supposed to be our kids' first teachers, and every single day, these kids keep showing us, remove the politics, remove the garbage, remove who's, who's right and who's wrong, and remove all that garbage. And these kids all across the country and around the world can be our greatest teachers. Yep. Sometimes we just need to shut up and listen to them, or we just need to watch. We just need to watch what they do. Yeah. We will be able to share with people, Jay, every single week if we wanted to. We could spend the full amount of time every week just talking about what kids, young people, have done to make people's lives better. And we search for stories around politicians and adults that are doing the same. Right. And I have a, you know, just to kind of piggyback, I have a, a good friend who lives up in Syracuse, New York. He and I went to college together. And he has a, a son named DJ. And uh, DJ is just one of these kids who, from the time he was really young, he just had this innate desire to want to help other people. Now, as you know, Syracuse, New York, their winters are brutal. Yeah, uh, they, they average more snowfall up there than most other places in the entire country. 
And so Damon's son, DJ, a few years ago, on his own, with no prompting from his parents, um, started collecting blankets. And he reckoned he was driving, and I may get the story a little bit mixed up, but the, the gist of it is he was driving through through uh, his hometown and through Syracuse with his family one night. It was freezing. It was bitterly cold. And his parents were trying to talk to him about making the connection to be thankful, to be grateful for what you have, because some people will not be able to live in a place tonight that has warmth, right? Yeah. And so for DJ, he literally took took that to heart and and in his own head, in his own heart, was like, there are actually people that are going to have to sleep outside tonight that will not have a roof over their head. So DJ started collecting blankets, started at his school. Uh, he's in the Civil Air Patrol as well through his you know, squadron with the Civil Air Patrol. But this kid is still doing it. was recognized up in Syracuse by local and state government for the work he's doing to help people. And now this kid because of that work, has the desire, the, the goals, the drive to continue to do more and more to help other people. The kid's an amazing, amazing kid. And there are kids like that all over the country. Yeah. And it, you know, so it, it drives you because part of it is, is a selfish thing too. You get that warm feeling inside. You feel good when you're able to help someone out and you're not necessarily doing it for recognition, but man, the feeling that you get when you're able to to make an impact on someone's life or provide them with so much value or something meaningful. Or right? hope. It, Just hope. hope. Yeah. It feels, it feels good. And, you know, um, the smallest, you know, on the smallest of scales that, you know, random act of kindness that people do. And it, you know, it, it can make someone's day so much better and it gives you a good feeling to start the day. It's, so yeah, it's a, uh, no doubt. I had a chance to, to, I know we're probably getting a little bit short on time, but I, I had a chance uh, yesterday to speak at a, a school locally to a middle school and to your point you talk about the li little things that go a long way right and so I was talking to uh, this middle school and I asked all the kids there were about a hundred it was a small middle school six seventh and eighth graders let's say there were 120 kids in the room I spoke to the whole school at one time so I asked the kids how many of you in in this room have either been a part of or have heard of one student intentionally hurting another student either to their face in the hallways in the cafeteria in the classrooms or through social media through instagram facebook twitter whatever how many of you have seen this with your own eyes or heard it with your own ears and every single kid in the in the auditorium raised their hand yep. every kid so and and you know they were they were giggling a little bit and and so I said, okay, let me ask you something else. I'm going to give you an example, and I want to see if any of you guys have seen this. So I walked up to a young man that was sitting uh, in the auditorium, and I said, uh, do you mind if I put my hands on you? And he said, I don't mind, no problem. So I extended my hand, and I just wanted to introduce myself to him. So I extended my hand, and I essentially said, hey, how you doing? I'm John. And he extended his hand back to me and he said, hey, hi, John, nice to meet you, I'm James. So I looked him right in the eyes and I said, James, I just want you to know that I hope you have a great day and it's an honor for me to be here today and it's an honor to meet you. And I walked away. And there was like this stunned silence in the room. And I said, how many of you have seen that on a daily basis? And not one hand went up. And so that's what we're we're up against when we're trying to help and inspire other people. And you were talking about adults, we were talking before about our adults being our greatest teachers, <clears throat> but it's, it's also, we have a huge responsibility because there's something very, very wrong with the world that we live in. Right. Yeah. If every single kid from, now these kids are 11 to 14 years old. They're, they're babies. They're still trying to figure it out. Yep very impressionable they need they need a lot of guidance still as as independent as they think they are absolutely yeah. but not one kid in that room batted an eyelash when i asked if they have heard one student hurt intentionally hurt another student commonplace for them every minute of every day they're exposed to it but when i asked them if they ever saw what i showed them every almost every one of them said that's crazy that would never happen what's crazy is that crazy is normal now yeah yep and 
so I, I wanted to share that because that's what we're up against. Um, you know, I was just talking about DJ and, and his father just got back to me real quick. Um, just to give you a little bit more specifics, this year will be his ninth year doing it. This is the kid that does the, the blankets, right? This year will be his ninth year doing it. Wow. He started in second grade. <laughs> he collects blankets for the rescue mission in Syracuse, New York. However, the blankets have been used all over central New York. He has collected, get ready for this, over 5,000 blankets that's awesome and thousands of dollars in cash for the mission how awesome is that very cool that's so that's the kind of stuff that you know you see that and i wish we could see more of that i wish the headlines were filled with that all the time those are the kind of stories that we need to share yeah it's awesome that we have this venue now to to put the word out and let people know how little it takes you know that's right Nine thousand blankets is no small task but the thought in itself you know, you can start somewhere and it can grow from and, a small little tiny seed. And he committed to it. Yep. And he's been doing it for nine years. So the kid he started in second grade. He's in, what, 10th or 11th grade now. And he, and he continues to do it. So that's the kind of stuff that inspires me. And, and hopefully those of you who are listening that have kids, please, please talk to your kids about how they treat one another. Please encourage your kids when they have the chance to say something or do something positive. Or they have a chance to do something hurtful. They try to do something that's going to lift somebody up uh, and not tear them down because we got enough of that going on. Um, Leading by example too. You know, if your your kid sees you introducing yourself or talking to a stranger, just having a conversation off the cuff, holding a door, smiling, those small random acts of kindness go a long know, way. Yep, kids are going to learn from that. They go a long, long way. Yep. So. Uh, as always, it was awesome to be able to share our, our lives and be able to share your time uh, with us. Uh, we love doing this. This was episode, episode two. Episode number two, yeah. Anything else you want to wrap with, Jay? Or are you good to go? I think that's about it. Uh, just want to say thank you to everyone who's taking the time to tune in and, and uh, watch it on YouTube or Facebook. And you know you can find us. Uh, you can find us on iTunes and just about any uh, podcast app. But Thanks again for your time. Uh, like we said earlier, it's a valuable thing, and we, we really appreciate you giving some of yours to us. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, another awesome week. Thanks for uh, joining us on this ride, and as always, be good to those you love. Let them know you love them, and I hope everybody has a great week. Thanks so much. Take care, guys. Peace. Thanks so much for listening to the Hashtag Positivity Podcast. Online at HashtagPositivity.org. On Facebook at Hashtag Positivity. And Instagram, the official Hashtag Positivity. If you liked the episode, please rate and review. And remember, positivity is contagious. Sprinkle that madness everywhere. We'll catch you next time.